Hey there, it's Clara from Archipro Academy, and today's Made Easy video is all on the shoe transporting points in acupuncture. I love to use those points in a clinical practice, but I know often my students have a hard time understanding specifically the connection to the five elements from the shoe transporting points. So without further ado, let's go for it. So the shoe transporting points, first of all, they're characteristics. These points are all located below the elbow and below the knees. So there are much more dynamic points than other points. That's why often in clinical practice we use them frequently. Patients always ask me, why is there so many points on the elbows or on my lower leg or on my lower arm, right? There's so many points on my wrist and my ankle and my hand and my feet. That's because those points are so powerful. Right? So we use them a lot in clinical practice. So from the elbow down to the fingers and from the knees down to the toes, those are the location of the five shoe transporting points. They are the Jingwell points. So the Jingwell points are the ones that are located at the tip of the toes or the tip of the fingers, except for kidney one, which is on the sole of the foot. But most of them are going to be at the tip of the fingers or the toes. And those points are where chi is most superficial. They address liver disorders, chest area and rib, rib sorry, region disorders. That's their main function to make it easy. The next category of point is or are the yin spring points, which are a little bit higher on each limb than obviously the jingwa. Those are where the chi quickens. They address heart disorders and febrile diseases, very fire points, right? The shoe stream points, which are a little bit higher on the limbs, arm or legs, are where the meridians broaden or widens. They address spleen disorders and excess dampness, and that's obviously the correlation because the shoe stream are very earth point. The Jing River points, which are now closer to the elbow and closer to the knee, are where chi deepens. They address lung disorders and superficial symptoms because they're more metal-related points. And finally, the Hussey points, which are all at the elbows and at the knee and are where she plunges into the body. They address kidney, lung, and stomach disorders. They're very, very strong points. Okay, so that gives you the five shoe transporting points, the Jing Well, the Ying Spring, the Shoe Stream, the Jing River, and the Hussey. So, of course, half of those words are Chinese, and the other half is kind of like the translation of the English. So I wanted to kind of look at those words per se. So when you look at all those points, they are located below the elbow and below the knee. Okay, and as you can see, each of those two transporting points have a water related name right and so a well is the least amount of water and then a spring is a bit more water than a well a stream has more a river is more and the sea is the one that has the most water okay a well is the one that has least water and the sea is the one that has the most water so what does it have to do with acupuncture? Well, all the well points are located at the fingers or toes, or like I said, for kidney one underneath the sole. So basically at the end of the limbs. But the C points are all located at the elbows or the knees. So what does that mean? It means that the one that are at the elbow and the knees, the points of the Hussey points that are at the elbow and the knees, have the most amount of water, the biggest body of water, which is the sea, which means they have the most chi and the most blood. So Hussey points have the most chi and the most blood of all the five shoe transporting points. On the other hand, the well, the Jing well points, have the least amount of chi and the least amount of blood of all the shoe transporting point. And the other ones are in between, okay? So a little bit more of chi and blood in the spring one, a little bit more in the stream, a little bit more in the river, and of course the most in the sea. What's interesting is the Jingwao point often are going to be pricked to bleed. So we bleed a couple of drops of blood to try to release the pressure from fever, from excess fire, and so, 
Why can we do this? It's because there is not a lot of chi and not a lot of blood in the well. Because there's not a lot of chi or blood in those points, when we prick to bleed, we don't lose a lot of blood or a lot of chi. We release the pressure without losing chi or blood because there's not a lot there. Does that make sense? Compared to if you were going to bleed uh, a horsey point like bladder 40, which is behind the knee, you would definitely lose some chi and some blood. And sometimes it's important because we have too much and we need to release it. But it's also sometimes uh, for deficiency people, we don't want to do that, right? So that kind of gives you an idea that all points are below the elbow and the knee and they go by amount of chi and blood depending how high they are from the toes and the fingers. Hope that made sense. Okay, next thing to talk about with the shoe transporting point is their connection to the five element. They can be used for the mother-son relationship of the five elements generating sequence. So remember the generating sequence in the five element is wood generates fire, fire generates earth, earth generates metal, metal generates water, and of course we need water to generate wood or to grow forest and trees, right? And if you live in Vancouver like I do in Canada, it's very green in here because we get lots of water to generate lots of green forest, <laughs> meaning it rains a lot here. <laughs> so that's the characteristic that we use the shoe transporting point for, is the mother-son relationship. If there is deficiency syndrome, we tonify the mother. That's the five element theory, right? If there's a deficiency syndrome in the generating sequence, we tonify the mother. Now, in general, with the shoe transporting point, we're going to tonify the mother point of the affected meridian or the mother meridian. And if you're confused, I'm going to explain that in a minute, okay? When we look at the points, it'll be much easier. For excess syndrome, we clear the sun. Right? We clear the excess, we clear the baby, we clear the sun. So we clear the sun point of the affected meridian and the sun meridian and or the sun meridian. So if that feels confusing, let me give you examples because that's the best thing to do. So here's a table which I have all the acupuncture points that are on the yin meridians. So you can see the yin meridians. You have the wood which is the Jingwao points, or wood, the fire, which are the yin spring, the earth, the shu stream, the metal of the Jing river, and the water are the Hussi points. So that way you can see the five elements connecting to the five shu transporting points. Okay? Below I got the little generating sequence, so just to remind ourselves that wood generates fire, earth, metal, water, that's the generating sequence. Next to that, I have just a little bit of an example. For example, if you start at, um, let's say, liver, gallbladder, which is wood, gets really stressed, and there's a lot of stress, which can lead to insomnia. Insomnia, which affects the heart, specifically the heart-mind, can lead to craving due to fatigue and you know, picking up coffee and energy drinks and probably sugar and things that are not best for us, which in turn affects the spleen and stomach or the digestive system. And so the bad diet or the bad choices, because we're exhausted, leads to poor immune system because the mother of the immune system or the long and large intestine is spleen and stomach, the digestive system. So the digestive system is not able to generate a good immune system, so the immune system gets depleted. If we have a deplete, depleted sorry, immune system, it can lead for some people, for some women specifically, to fertility issues. And so that really affects the kidney bladder or the water element of the kidney bladder because it's related to the reproductive system. And when couples have fertility issues, it leads to a lot of stress, which in turn starts to activate the liver in a bad way. So it's all kind of connected, right? Everything in the five element is connected. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea. But let's look at how we do the mother-son relationship using the five shoe transporting point. I know when I teach this lecture to my students in class, everybody always kind of looks at me like the deer in the headlight, like, what are you talking about? So I hope I can make this easy to understand and to practice for you as well. 
Okay, so let's say we're going to try to start with excess. Let's say there's excess liver. So there's liver fire because the person is super stressed, they have high blood pressure, they have red eyes, they get angry, they have temporal headaches, which is better on cold compress. They have so many issues. And then of course, because of that, they can't sleep at night. So basically, all this excess liver is generating excess for the heart, right? It's like you put too much wood in the fire, you have a massive fire. So if liver is excess, remember for excess, we clear the sun, okay, of the affected meridian and then the sun meridian. So let me say that again. We clear the sun. So the sun of liver or the sun of wood is fire. Right? So if there's excess wood or excess liver fire or excess liver, we have to clear the sun. The sun is heart because it's a fire element. You still with me? Okay. So if you look at my table here, wood is the Jingwa point. You can see that's wood. So wood is the main meridian, which is liver. But we want to clear the fire point, the fire point of liver is liver two, because the fire point is the sun point of the liver. Liver is wood, the sun point of liver is liver two. So that's clearing the point of the meridian that is the sun. So again, when there's excess, we clear the sun point of the main meridian. The main meridian is liver because liver is affected. You still with me? Now, the other option is to also clear the sun meridian. So the sun meridian is heart, right? We agree the sun meridian of liver is heart. So the option is to use the fire point of heart, which would be heart eight. You could use both liver two and heart eight, and that would be very powerful. You're using the sun point of the main meridian, which is liver, so liver two, and you're using the sun point of the sun meridian, and the sun meridian is heart, so that would be heart eight. Still with me? Okay. Let's give an example for a deficiency. Okay, so deficiency would be that, remember, for deficiency, we tonify the mother. Right? If the baby is deficient, we tonify the mother. So, if you have a mother in life, if you have a mother and the baby is sick, your, your baby is feeding from the mommy, right? She is, she is feeding and breastfeeding. So, in order for the baby to get better, usually the mommy can eat better food to give to the baby, right? So, it's a mother son relationship or daughter, it could be. <laughs> so, in that instance, if we have a deficiency of the immune system, Let's say someone gets sick a lot, they always have flus and cold, and the immune system is really bad. They're like, oh my God, I get all the infection, it takes me forever to recover. My lung chi is very deficient, right? They wouldn't say that, but their lung chi is deficient, their wei chi, their defensive chi, their immune system is very deficient. And that's the metal element. Immune system lung is the metal element. So if the metal element is deficient, we tonify the mother point. So the mother point of metal, because the mother element of metal is earth. So the mother point of metal would be long nine. Okay? So long nine is the earth point of the long, which is the mother point of the long. If we want to tonify the mother meridian, the mother meridian is spleen because it's still the yin meridian, right? So the mother meridian of long is spleen. And so we would use the spleen mother point, which is spleen three. And that makes total sense, because in life, if your immune system is deficient, you need a good diet. You need to replenish food that have nutrients, a food that is high in probiotics to have good fighters to be able to strengthen your immune system. And spleen three is one of the best point to allow better transportation, transformation, and digestion of nutrients. So that's a perfect, perfect combination. And long nine tonify the long chi. So having said that again, let me say that again. If the mother meridian of metal is earth, we use the earth point of metal, which is long nine, or we use the mother point 
on the mother meridian, which would be the mother meridian is spleen, spleen three. Yes? Okay. So that's how we go about it. And if you do both together, long nine and spin three, you double your chance to get a better outcome and you're tonifying the immune system in that perspective. That's using the five shoe transporting point for treatment. You don't have to use it that way, but this is something that's very, very useful in clinical practice. Let's look at the option of the young meridian. So in the young meridian, as you can see, it starts not from wood, but it starts from metal. It's the same direction. Metal generates water, water generates wood, wood generates fire, fire generates earth, and earth generates metal. So let's look at the option of stomach fire, okay? Excess of stomach. So stomach is the earth element, and there is excess, okay? So there's excess fire. The person has like heartburn, acid reflux, bad breath, bleeding gums. Maybe they have uh, bleeding ulcers. They have uh, heartburn, the red tongue, lots of stomach fire. So if there's stomach fire, that's an excess syndrome. With the excess syndrome, we always clear the sun, right? Remember, we clear the sun. So the sun of earth is metal. So we would have to do stomach 45, and stomach 45 is a great point to clear stomach fire, actually, and in, in specifically in clinical practice. But the sun of earth is metal, so we would have to tonify stomach, oh, sorry, we would have to clear stomach 45, clear the sun, okay, of the main meridian. Now, if we want to clear the sun of the sun meridian, we use large intestine one. So again, large intestine is the sun of stomach. We have to clear the large intestine, so we use the metal point. Yes? So we always use the same element. You can see it's metal for both, but one is the main meridian, the other one is the sun meridian. Large intestine is the sun of stomach. Yes? Okay. Let's look at if we had some gallbladder chi deficiency. So gallbladder chi deficiency would be someone that is very shy, very introverted, very self-doubt, self-esteem issue, cannot make decision, um, very uh, kind of weak-minded, I guess. And so that person would be deficient. So if we have gallbladder deficiency, remember, gallbladder is wood, we need to tonify the mother. The mother of wood is water. So in order for the gallbladder to be good or to be healthy, we need to tonify the mother. The mother is water. Yes? Okay. So on the gallbladder meridian, we are going to use gallbladder 43 because it's the mother point of the gallbladder. Right? Water is the mother of wood. Gallbladder is wood. The mother is water. So the water point of gallbladder is gallbladder 43. So that's what we would use. Now, if we want to use the mother meridian, the mother meridian of gallbladder is bladder, the urinary bladder, right? Because it's the water element, the young element of the water. So in that instance, you got it. Which point do we use? Bladder 66. Yes! So it's always the same element, but we use either the main meridian or the sun meridian in that instance, in, or the main meridian or the mother meridian in the other instance, in both examples. Does that make sense? I wanted to make a quick video so you guys grasp this concept, because I think for a lot of us, this becomes really complicated, but it's not. All you have to remember is the elements, order which one is the mother, which one is the son, and pick the point that are related to the excess or deficiency symptoms. I hope that made sense. If you like my graphics, you will love this PDF digital book I have. It's called Acupoints Made Easy, and it's 800 pages of all the acupuncture points. If you want to see more, go to my website. I show you everything that's inside. And the feedback from this book has been amazing. It's been so cool. I love that people benefit from it, students, practitioners, and anybody that loves to learn about acupuncture. Acuporacademy.com, you can find this right there.
In the meantime, if you haven't connected with me, connect on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. I'd love to see you there. I post every day on Facebook, every day on Instagram, and I have videos on YouTube to help you grasp TCM and make all of it easy to understand and have fun in the process. So I wish you the best. Have a great day. And no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM.